Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the respiratory structures, specifically the pathway from where air enters the body to where gas exchanges occurs in the lungs. And to get started, let's take a look at what models that we have here. So first of all, on the right, you can see that you have a mid-sagittal plane of the inside of the head, which allows you to see a variety of different things, such as the cranial cavity, the nasal cavity, and the oral cavity. Now, based off of this, we can see a couple of places where air can enter the body, which is the oral cavity and the nasal cavity. But just to be clear, you would prefer to have the air enter the nasal cavity because you have structures that are going to help with humidifying, warming, as well as cleaning the air as it enters your respiratory tract. So before it gets into your deeper respiratory system, you definitely want it to be acclimated to the body, which you can warm, humidify, but also clean the air so that you try to get rid of as many of the microbes or pathogens which might be in the air from the environment. Now, furthermore, let's start off where we would see air entering the body, which is at this hole. You can see it at the bottom of the nose, and you typically have two. Those are called nares or nostrils. So please use the word in your lab manual, but yeah, the nares are going to be the openings to the, from the environment into the respiratory tract, which leads into your nasal cavity. Now, in the nasal cavity, you actually have these three kind of protrusions that go inward into the nasal cavity, and they kind of look like a shell-like structure, which almost looks spiraling, but these structures are called conchae. And you have three different conchae, the superior concha, middle concha, and inferior concha. Now, just to be clear, in other models, typically the, the superior concha is not very visible. It's usually very internal to the ethmoid bone and very hard to see. But at the very least, you can definitely see middle and inferior nasal concha. Now, in these concha, you will see that they're relatively large, they're very visible, and this is where a lot of that warming, humidifying, and cleaning of that air will occur. Now, from here, though, it will lead into the back of the throat, which is behind the nasal cavity, behind the oral cavity, and then behind something new called the larynx. So collectively, this is called the pharynx. So the pharynx is going to be this tube right behind everything, and it actually has three different regions. So the first of which is behind the nasal cavity. This is called the nasopharynx. And something that you might also see is that you have this opening to something that we learned about in the special senses, this is called the opening of the eustachian tube. So leading from your middle ear, that is going to go to your nasopharynx. So from the top of it, or the top of the back of the nasal cavity down to about the soft palate, this is your nasopharynx. From the soft palate to the epiglottis behind the oral cavity, this is the oral pharynx. And then from the epiglottis to the top of the cricoid cartilage, this is the laryngopharynx. Now, really quickly, before we move on to the next respiratory structures, there are a few more things that you can see here, which includes these kind of darkened tissues within the pharynx. These are going to be called your tonsils. So you may know of your tonsils as a kind of lymphatic structure or a immune structure. And it is thought to have some, some function in that, but you can see that you have three different types. So first of all, in the back of the nasopharynx, you have what's called the pharyngeal tonsil, otherwise known as the adenoid. And then you have behind the tongue, you have the lingual tonsil. So lingual tongue, behind it, this is the lingual tonsil. And then in the sides of your throat, these are called the, fer or sorry, the palatine tonsils. So this is your soft palate, and you can see your palatine tonsil kind of on the sides of the back of your throat. So this is something that you may have also seen when you were sick, something that is kind of swollen in the back of your throat. Like if you ever get a sore throat, check it out, but you might even see a kind of white structure or white substance coming out of it. Those would be your palatine tonsils. Now, so far we had for nasopharynx, oropharynx, and laryngopharynx. And you may have asked yourself, what does laryngo refer to? That's referring to your larynx here. So you can see that you have this structure on the front of your neck. This is the larynx. But just to be clear, you also have this tube that also leads from the pharynx. This is called the esophagus. But we'll talk about that in the digestive system. So in the 
larynx. What we can see here is that you have a variety of different types of cartilages as well as ligaments connecting them, but you also have some kind of internal structures called folds within it as well. So first here up at the top, this is called the epiglottis. So this is going to be right near the opening of the larynx, and basically when you swallow food, this can close over the larynx so that when you swallow food, it doesn't go into your respiratory tract. It instead has to go behind to go into your esophagus. So this is going to be your epiglottis at the top. And then the main kind of chunky part in the middle here, this is actually your Adam's apple, or at least in guys, this is your Adam's apple. But just to be clear, everyone has this. It's just that in guys, it's a little bit more la or a little bit larger and a little bit more anterior pointing. So this is called your thyroid cartilage, and that is going to be because it's very close to your thyroid, almost directly superior to it. But this is your thyroid cartilage, and if you feel the front of your neck, you can definitely feel where that would be. So feel for a very large cartilage with even a point at the front. That's called your anterior protuberance. So this is going to be your thyroid cartilage, which is then going to be connected to a couple of other things. If you look closely... Do you see this spongy bone in here? Do you see that very kind of porous bone up here? This is the hyoid bone, meaning that this is the thyrohyoid ligament. And then down here, you have what's called the cricoid bone. And the cricoid bone is actually going to be a little bit different between anterior and posterior sides because it is cut like in half, but on the anterior side, it's slightly smaller, but on the posterior side, it's a lot larger. So we'll be looking at the larynx model a little bit later, but you can see that both of these are parts of the cricoid cartilage and then connecting between thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. If you put those two words together, what do you get? Cricothyroid ligament. So it seems a little bit hard to say at first, but it honestly isn't too bad. Cricothyroid ligament. Now, internal to everything, what you have here are these fold structures. These are actually going to be your vocal and vestibular folds. And if you're not aware, your larynx is actually otherwise known as your, your voice box. So once again, try making a sound and then feel for the vibrations in the front of your neck. That is going to be due to the vocal folds, which are more inferior, but they'll also be supported by these superior folds called vestibular folds. So this ridge that's coming out here, vocal fold, and then vestibular fold on top. Now, if you look closely between these two models, if you go inferiorly from here, what you're going to get to next is this long tube that is going to be leading down from the larynx to the like middle of your thorax. That is called your trachea. So your trachea is going to be made of these, these C-shaped pieces of cartilage. So you can see the rounded part on the, on the front, but on the back, it's actually going to have connective tissue instead. So it's not a ring. It's going to be a C-shape with cartilage on the front. Now that's super important because it helps to keep the cartilage or to keep the trachea stable so that it remains open, but it's also going to give it some flexibility. But from the trachea, you can see that it branches out to two sides here. This first branch is called the primary bronchi. But furthermore, they're a little bit different. So this one is called the left primary bronchus left side. This one is called the right primary bronchus. And then unfortunately we can't see inside of the left, so let's take a look at just this one on the right. And what you can see here is that it continues to branch. So from the right primary bronchus, the next branching here, this would be the secondary bronchus. So right secondary bronchus, right secondary bronchus, but just to be clear, you actually have two right secondary bronchi coming down here as well to give you three. So while the primary bronchi go into like the individual lungs, each of these secondary bronchi go into the individual lobes. And if you look closely, the left lung will have two lobes, meaning that it will have two secondary bronchi, but the right side has three lobes, so it's going to have three instead. But directly coming off of the, of, off of the secondary bronchi, then you get your tertiary bronchi. And just to be clear, you have more bronchi than that. You have quaternary and so on, but like you're going to continue to branch and branch and branch to go all throughout the lung. 
And we're not going to get into those, so let's not worry about that. But as you get to the very tips, where you start to see that the cartilage starts to kind of become absent, as you can see, like you still have a lot of these rings that look like the trachea, so this is all cartilage. But when you get to the point where you do not have any cartilage, that is where you have what's called bronchioles. So while the bronchi or bronchus, like these are going to be the cartilaginous structures, the bronchioles are going to be made up of mostly smooth muscle. So I know that I typically don't do this, and I try not to do that, but I'm actually going to move backwards. So at the very tips of everything, you're going to see that you have these little air sacs. These are called alveoli, or alveolus for singular. So just like bronchus for singular and bronchi for plural, alveolus for singular, alveoli for plural. But what you'll see here is that Connected to the alveoli, you should have this little duct called an alveolar duct, but that is not visible on this model. But what you can see is that you have this tube leading into it. These tubes that lead into the respiratory structures, these are called respiratory bronchioles. So respiratory bronchioles, these are going to come off of a terminal bronchial, but the terminal bronchioles come off of just generally a bronchial. So at the alveoli, that is where you're going to have what's called gas exchange. And you can see that the blood vessels go from red to blue. Or sorry, from blue to red, sorry, blue to red, meaning that it's deoxygenated to oxygenated. But just as a reminder, like if this is carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs, this is going away from the heart. So what kind of blood vessel this, is this? This is an artery. Furthermore, it's a pulmonary artery. So carrying deoxygenated blood, this blue blood vessel is a pulmonary artery. And then this oxygenated blood going through a red blood vessel going to the heart, this is a pulmonary vein. So we'll be taking a look at more respiratory structures a little bit later, such as the larynx and respiratory muscles. But for now, I think that's good. So let's go ahead and finish up. And thank you for listening. Good luck with your studying, and I'll see you all next time.